literally an an advantage. The opposing team and they can't get on on track because of how loud it is. When you walk into that stadium and the people they're right there screaming your name, high fiving you, cheering you on, like that was everything to us. I thought we had so much fun, like just listening to music. Like we were the crowd, like. You know, there's so many kids that know so many Future and Rick Ross songs just because they were played at the stadium so much. This crowd really getting to the 49ers right now. All star offense. Them not being able to audible out of their plays and knowing that they have to snap the ball. The ball's out and Seattle has it. Being able to capitalize off of the noise was huge. They broke the Guinness Book of World Records sound mark. The big hands for that. That's a pretty good damn advantage. And it's one that didn't have to be coached. So it was like, you know, it was, you know I mean, the 12 come stock like that. You feel me down? You know what I mean? That shit was a big ass hill. This is the only game that matters. Playing in CenturyLink again, we get extra fire from doing just that. Trying to be 1-0, and and today, going against the Minnesota Vikings. We're just getting some guys back, that's all. You know, we got depth on this team, but uh, I expect a lot, of, a lot of points on the board today. I'm just so happy that I finally get my chance to come back up, man. So, uh, I'm real grateful. Got everybody back, man. Uh, coming back home. Uh, Man, you have no idea. Get your popcorn ready. It's on, baby. About one of them. Welcome back, Percy Harvin. Actually, welcome, period, because he hasn't played it down yet for the Seahawks. After undergoing surgery in August, this guy can do an awful lot of things for you offensively, special teams-wise. Wilson in shotgun, three receivers near side. Here comes the blitz. Wilson looks, steps up, lets it fly over the top. Percy Harvin, what a catch! Reaches up with one hand and brings it in. Inside the 45, down to the 40 of Minnesota, a 15-yard game. Welcome, Mr. Harvin, to the lineup. It's against his former team, and so I know there was probably a lot of emotions running high for him. Walsh, who strives forward and gets it high end over end. Harvin is going to make the catch five yards deep. He brings it out across the five, 10, sprint 15, 20. There he goes, 30. Cuts back 40, 45 midfield. All the way into Viking territory. How about them apples, baby? Percy Harmon, a 57-yard kickoff return. Everybody in the league knew that dude was fast. There isn't a guy that would look at his highlight tape and wouldn't say, okay, they're going to find ways to get him the ball. He's the guy, right? And so it added an explosive threat to our offense and it challenged the receivers at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Harvin and Baldwin wide to the near side. Shotgun snap to Wilson on second down and 10. Wilson's gonna go for it all. Doug Baldwin in the back of the end zone. He reaches up. Touchdown Seahawks! In the back right corner of the end zone. Over and between two defenders. Doug Baldwin, are you kidding me? What a catch! Yeah, a little bit, a little bit shaking, baby. Great release. Woo! Great release. Great release. Great release. He ain't gonna press no more. He better know better than that. He ain't watch no film. Seahawks, they won it in grand fashion, and now the stretch drive to the playoffs begins. Not a bad day. 10 and 1, baby. 10 and 1. Going to the bar, get some well rested. I'm going back to the country. Mama coming up! Mike B and I, we were we were we didn't know each other, but we knew of each other because we were quote unquote the top free agents at the time. We've been paying attention to each other over the last couple of years, and we get here and our wives kind of got close immediately because again we're all we're going through the same thing. We're trying to figure out where the kids are going to school, where we're going to live, all these different things. But Mike and I didn't start clicking really until probably as soon as the season rolled around because Mike talked a lot. I, I was the guy that kind of sit in the corner and just see what's going on. Mike is the, he had, he's talking, he's life of the party, he's everywhere. 
I'm like, this guy would talk way too dog. Him and Sherm, I thought talked way too much when I first got here. Me and Cliff, man, we we, we almost got in a fight in Atlanta because I was I was like, man, you need to come on, man. I don't care if you got a goddamn headache. Uh, come on, let's play. Like, it's, we're trying to win. Like, and I think after that, I, you know, I, I was telling him now I, I was on a bus and I was telling him like, now nah, our wives can't be friends because you want to fight me. You know what I'm saying? But then it was like that idea it was that I really wasn't fighting him. I was pushing him. And he would push me so much that it allowed me to be the player that I was. Being able to accept the role that we were in and understanding, okay, we're not starters anymore, which is fine. Now I got to show why I should be one. But that was huge. Those guys were, I mean, you can't measure their impact. Uh, at that time, they were rotational, but I mean, they all the big plays, you can, every big play you see from that season, you'll see them on the field making an make impact. But I was really good at getting sack fumbles, so like that was going to be my con contribution to, to that defense was, you're going to get sack fumbles because everybody else is going to get interceptions, everybody else is going to, you know what I mean, cause fumbles or whatever, like that was going to be your thing. That first step, he, that first jump he gets off the edge, man, and every offense I've been a part of that's played a Cliff Averill team, You've had to worry about that guy. The tip play, you know, that everybody gives me credit for was Cliff freaking in his lap. And for me, it was just continue to perfect that. Perfect my get off, perfect my first three steps. And if I do those, everything else will work itself out. You can't step up the throw, you can't throw a good pass. And it makes my job a lot easier. So it's always the, you know, the Russian coverage work together. Mike B was so unique because he literally can play every position on the D line. For me, I always thought that every position on the defensive line was exactly the same. They just had more space. Like, playing over the center was the same thing as playing over the guard. Playing over the guard is the same thing as playing over the tackle or tight end. He played the full eye, he played the three, and he played the nose. And it took our defense to another level. I really didn't care who I went against. I just wanted to win, honestly. Whatever it took to win, that was kind of what I thought. I would study him. Like, you know what I mean? I study all, all defensive ends. And I would study this guy, and I would see him do things where he knew what type of offensive lineman he was going against, where literally I've seen him catch somebody punching, like punching at his chest, catch the hand, throw it out the way, and just get upfield. Like, how'd you time that up? I think the main thing that would make me a good player was my abilities. I practiced my hands so much that it just became like so natural to have reactions. I think football is such a an art, you know, people always talk about it not being the artistry, but there's so much art, you know, our paint and our canvas is a lot different because it's our bodies. But there's so many ways that you can like move and sway and create these beautiful moments by, you know, knowing how people are moving. And I think for me, I always felt like an artist in that way. So I, I kind of felt like that as a player. <laughs> he was just a crafty, crafty guy. And then the energy that he brought, I mean, he talked a lot of trash out there. Mike B challenged every single offensive lineman every single day to the point I'm like, because I don't know for whatever reason I always hung around defensive players. Me and Beast Mode, the only offensive guys around the defensive guys. But I'm like, dude, you, you got to stop messing with our linemen, bro. Like, you know, Mike B, ah, I'm going to get him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm like, Mike, okay, you win, bro. But. Their energy, I mean, it, it changed us a little bit. It made us a little bit tougher offensively up front, and it, it got us ready for the, the guys that we were going to see that season. This will be the center of the football universe on Monday night when the 9-2 and two Saints come to Seattle to play the 10-1 and one Seattle Seahawks. We're 10-1, and one, primetime football. Everybody's watching. A huge matchup between the two best teams in this conference. Time to be great, baby. Time to be great. Let's be great. Here we go. The 12th man, unbelievable. Right now, the Seahawks have their pass rushing group in on third and five. Shotgun snap to Breeze. Steps up in the pocket. Looks. He's hit the ball. Comes out. It's picked off by the Seahawks. Coming near side 20. 15. Michael Bennett, five. Touchdown, Seahawks. Ball was slapped away from Drew Brees as he was getting set to throw right into the hands of Bennett, and it was good night, Irene. As I remember Cliff tip, tipping the ball, and I was thinking like, man, I should catch this ball. We got to the point where, jokingly, we would be like, we would practice, at, we, we would tell DQ, hey coach, we should practice this way, because Cliff is going to get the sack, Mike's going to get the recovery, and he's going to house it. And when I caught it, I was just like, okay, I was a high school running back. Did you see the move though? I told y'all I was a high school running back. Hey, hey, you saw the moves, though. 
sack, fumble, fumble recovery, touchdown is the best play in football. <laughs> like that's the that's the trifecta. It's just one of those beautiful plays. It was kind of like the whole team, everybody blocked, Clint blocked, Jay Lane cleared the lane so I could score. So it was just like a very team. I would never have gotten to the end zone if all those guys wouldn't have been blocking. Two receivers each side. Play fake to Marshawn. Wilson looks, gonna throw to the end zone. Got a man wide open! Touchdown! Seahawks! Dark ball one in the left corner of the end zone! There's not enough 89 jerseys in the stands. We gotta do something about that. My coach came up to me. He was like, <laughs> it was so funny. They wanna put Cam on him. They don't think you can do it. He told me this. I took that shit personally. To get to the 22, keep this drive going, and Breeze taking a shot for Graham, incomplete. That's KJ Wright again, making a case for the Grinder Award tonight. That game, I was a Gruden Grinder. Uh, Monday Night Football, John Gruden gave out an award. KJ Wright was a Gruden Grinder. Throws, Sproles makes the catch, and he's dropped by KJ Wright. When, when coaches try you, uh, you don't think I could cover this dude. You don't think I could cover this running back man to man. I just got to go out and show you that I could do it. Here comes the run. Screen pass to Sproles. He's wrapped up and dropped back at the 40 yard line. Playing it perfectly. Playing tired. Nice job, all right? You a grown man today, big dog. Nice job. That's how you do some work. That's how you work. That's how you work on Monday night. And now the winning streak here at home goes to 14 games. Oh, man. Ass kicking all day. All day, man. Best, that's the best offense, but they play the best defense yet they get today. Oh, I ain't got much to say. I ain't got much to say. But we beat that. I'm out of them boys. God. Hey. Josh, you said. Hey, Josh, what happened, Josh? Uh -huh. I thought, huh? I thought we had half Jimmy Graham. Huh? Or two Breeze. Huh? Where's the L.O.P., bro? L.O.P. They don't make them like, like us. They don't make them like us. They don't make them like us before. They'll never make them like us no more. You know what this play is? Cliff gets the interception, I run to the touchdown. Man, the Saints were the, the top team in the NFC at that time. Like, Drew Brees was still that guy. I think on this play, Cliff got off. And I always just remember tips and overthrow, overthrows. I remember Cliff tip, tipping the ball. And I was thinking, like, man, I should catch this ball. And when I caught it, um, I was just like, OK. I was a high school running back. Um, so I was thinking, like, I should go to the touchdown. And, you know, it was just one of those beautiful plays. It was kind of like the whole team, everybody blocked, Clint blocked, Jay Lane cleared the lane so I could score. So it was just like a very team. I would never have gotten to the end zone if all those guys wouldn't have been blocking. So I think that was made it special is that, you know, we had everybody kind of was like super happy that I made that play. And it really was Cliff that made the play. I just happened to be there to make, to make the next play. So that's how we were in that team. It was just like a special team.